What it do, what it do. Welcome back to With That Being Said Show, a hip-hop show where you get points for your hot takes. I am your host, Boozy Brother Sean. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel and like the video. I got my good people on the panel again today. Got special guest premiere. Got Chris Dahl back again. And got the queen, Press Play Jones. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this show. Question number one. We're talking about 50 Cent. Now, just recently, 50 Cent was honored in Hollywood, a Hollywood star. And there are some people that felt mixed feelings about that. Now, after looking at the credentials and what qualifies you to actually get a Walk of Fame Hollywood star, Chris Dog, I ask you, did 50 Cent earn and deserve a Walk of Fame Hollywood star? Not only did he earn it, he deserved it. He could, we could have gave him this uh, a couple of years ago. The, his body of work is uh, unmatched, to be honest. With, when, it, when you talk about people who transition from the business world, I said unmatched. There's other cats out there. Let me, let, me, let me back up. It's not unmatched, but he's one of the select few who's been able to transition from music to business to shows, producing, acting, movies. It, it the the it, it goes on and on. How could he not deserve a star? How could he not deserve a star? I couldn't go and tell you everybody who has a star out there because I really don't care that much. But I'm sure he's more deserving than a lot of them out there. So shout out to Fifty. I'm glad. I'm glad for you. I'm happy for you. That's a big deal. Good job. Okay, Premier. How are you feeling about this Hollywood star that Fifty Cent just got, man? Yeah, how do I feel? It's Queens, baby. Come on, how you know how I feel? <laughs> we deserve that all day. What city produces more legends than Queens? I let that marinate for a second. You tell me. <laughs> but as we get into it, he not only deserves it, he earned that star. He transitioned from music, in which he had, I believe, like a hundred and. 35 nominations, 86 is what he actually won. He actually grew that from music into being able to be a producer. He grew Gina into a, a, a tour that and a, a group that was worldwide and known and respected. You got people like uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks, I think, has a, a Walk of Fame star. And you have Jennifer Aniston and a bunch of these other just actors or just these characters. Oh, of course, 50 Entertainment, what he has done for the music game, for Hollywood in general, he deserves it. Come on, man. Okay. Press Play Jones. Does 50 deserve a Hollywood star in Hollywood? You know, I hate to agree with my competitors, but I have to on this one because it's undeniable that 50 Cent's body of work speaks for itself. As far as deserving the the star on the Walk of Fame, oh, yes, yes, yes. He definitely deserves it. Um, and he's been working hard, especially in film industry for years, not just music, not just vitamin water, like every, every, every aspect of business he's been, he's, he's nailed it. So yes, he definitely deserves it. Yeah. I got to give actually a point to everybody. Everybody had a, a, a specific point that they made, man. You all are absolutely right. 50 has been doing this and 50 has been putting in some serious work since Get Rich or Die Trying. If you didn't know, he had a soundtrack and an album, I mean, a movie with that also. He's been in, like like Press Play Jones said, he's been in the movie scene forever, you know. So you got to give him credit. You got to give him credit where it's due. All right, next question that we're getting into. We're getting into Tyler, the creator. Now, just recently, he just got a Grammy Award for Best Rap Album of the Year or Best Rap Album. And he actually called it a backhanded compliment. Yeah, after he got the award, he went to a press conference and he was basically saying that the word urban and urban category is the politically correct version of saying the N-word. Now my question is to you, Premier. Does Tyler Creator deserve to get credit for calling out the Grammys for their undertones, uh, racial undertones and you know, low-key slanders that they be on with urban music? Oh, for sure. I mean, he gets the credit along with a bunch of other artists in the past that have called out the Grammys for their uh, subjectivity or the way they choose to kind of uh, create a wall uh, between other categories and, uh, and, and mainstream categories, quote unquote. The word urban definitely is just another word. You might as well just say the nigga category. Uh, you can't find a better way to phrase the urban category when it comes to music in a way. Hip hop now has transitioned to the point to where it is pop. So I don't see where the difference or the line where hip hop can't meet the pop 
category with certain aspects of things or certain when it comes to numbers, which, you know, if they reach a certain number on the charts. So I give him credit by, for sure, just like everyone else. And he did the right thing by standing up and calling attention to it, because hopefully by next year, something can change. OK, press play Jones. Does he get a credit for calling them out or is this just something that I guess the Grammy's not even going to pay attention to? I definitely give him credit for calling them out, along with a, a lot of other people that have called him out on their BS. Um, but the way that Tyler, the creator, he phrased it was phenomenal. Like he put it in a way that other races can understand. It's not just an angry black man. It's like, yo, y'all need to change it because hip hop is popular music. Like it's not urban, it's popular. So yeah, put me in a category with Taylor Swift. Don't, don't divide us. It's just another way to divide us. So definitely love the way he phrased it. And I think people will actually pay attention because the way he said it, he didn't just sound like an angry black man. He just like, Hey, this is what it is. I wish I would change it, but you know, I appreciate the award. That was slick. Yeah. What about you, Chris Dog? How are you feeling about uh, Tyler, the creator? You know, in the previous episode, we already expected him to win over Meek Mills, even though we knew Meek Mills was supposed to win. But after he won and said what he said, how do you feel about him? And do you think he, he gets the credit for that? I hate to not give him credit, but really it's been done. It's, uh, the, the bigger thing would have been, I think, to make the statement would have been for him just not to go and not to accept it at all. I think that would have made a bigger statement than him saying, this is similar to you giving your son the remote control and it's not plugged into the console. No, no, no. If that's where you feel like you need to be, you know, you know, don't even go to the show. Don't, just don't show it any respect, as many artists do at this point. Uh, so, you know, the fact that he received it, he should have he should have denied it and 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 Put, he put himself in that category and then you'll never win anything so uh, you should have been a little more appreciative I guess if you decided to show up and if you, you you know since you went there I guess whatever you said could it doesn't really hold water to me like said it's been done before I'm not a fan I think he's a good artist but at the end of the day you know it, it just wasn't a good look for me okay well I'm, I'm definitely going to say this uh, Tyler, the creator, is in a hell, whole new generation, and this is the first person, I would say, in his generation to actually call out the Grammys as he did. And to your point, Jones, you definitely get credit for this, and you get the point for it. Press Play Jones said the way he articulated what he said, he made everyone understand that. Chris Dog threw shade on it, but the fact that he broke down in lamest terms, hey, you're giving me a controller that's not plugged up to the game, which means that even though you invited us here, we're not qualified to play in the game that y'all really got over here. Y'all just got us on the side. And that was powerful and, and it registered to a lot more people, especially his generation. On to the next question. We are going into Nas. Now, in a recent Instagram post that Big Sean put up, he was in the studio with Nas and he kind of blurted out and surprised everyone, letting everybody know that Nas was in the studio working on another album. Now the catch about this is, if Nas releases a project this year, he will be the most consistent in his whole career. That's right. Nas has never dropped the album three back-to-back -back years ever in his career. Now my question is to you, Premier. Queensboro in the house. Do you think that Nas is capable of dropping a classic album, a number one album, in 2020? Yeah, he definitely is. I mean, he's Nas. He's another legend uh, from Queens, like a lot of them. Um, when you get, when you break down his, I, we don't even talk about his lyrical ability. We already see what it is. Uh, he's always been consistent. Uh, this question was kind of tough for me because, yes, in terms of time frame within the year, another year, another year, consistently dropping his own music, fine. But features, Nas has never really left. Um, you know, back in the day when he had Illmatic, he was then featured on a bunch of other tracks, even before that. Live at the Barbecue, before he even dropped, you know, his own album. So, Nas is Nas. So, yeah, 2020, he can do so. He's been doing work with, with Ross. He's been in the studio with Sean. He's been in the studio with you know, little Nas X. Nas <laughs> is definitely relevant. He's always going to be relevant. He's a legend, and I, he really is 
along the same lines of Jay-Z when it comes to music. Mm, yep, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much right. What about you, Chris Dog? Uh, is Nas actually capable of being the first one in four generations to have a number one album or just make a classic album for Nas? Four generations, meaning I've been listening to Nas my entire life. <laughs> and I um, I love his music. His style delivery is, is uncompared when it comes to hip hop. Uh, he is hip hop. He is hip hop. I mean, he is. Uh, but as far as him putting out another album that could go number one, I can't see it happening personally. His delivery and the wave that we're in right now with the young people who buy the albums, I couldn't see it going number one. He would have to transition and do something totally different, which is against the grain for him, and I, I don't see it happening. So he could put out an album that will be a solid album, uh, go, go. Many people will listen to it, maybe get a radio joint here and there, but as far as the number one, he he's a little bit past that point in his career. Okay, what about you, Press Play Jones? Do you think that Nas has another classic in him for the new generation? I actually think he, he is capable of putting out um, another classic album. I mean, he had Big Sean in the studio with him, so we don't know what kind of features he got working up. True. We don't know what kind of creative juices he got flowing in the studio, so I'm not going to knock him, and I'm not going to say he's just going to put out the same same wave as he used to do before so i definitely think he could put out an album that went number one how long has Lil wayne been in the game he just put out an album that's number one so why wouldn't i believe nas can two he's a legend artists, two different artists. so i mean it's possible you never know with this this industry where streaming is more is more people are streaming music than they are listening to the radio so you never know and he already has a fan base if he get certain features on the album, he's going to get another fan base and another fan base and another fan base, which will eventually make it go number one. So I think it's possible. Yes. Press Play Jones, you actually got me on that last statement. What? The features. <laughs> it's the features. If he gets the proper features, it's, it's no looking back. Him on the rodeo track with Lil Nas X is a perfect example. If he puts that on his new album, he's getting number one. That that's a that's an automatic number one because of the single, because of Little Nas X. I was actually not gonna give it to you, but that was actually a really good point. So you do get that point on this one, Press Play Jones. And with that, we're definitely gonna take a quick break and we'll be back with Good Look, Bad Look, No Look. The Coils by Nature Beard Kit will keep your beard healthy and looking refreshed. First, you want to get your beard nice and clean with the Beard Face Cleanser and Shaving Foam. Next, you're going to want to lock in all that moisturized goodness with the Beard Butter. You're going to put some of this in your fingers and just rub it into your beard right on top of that moisturizer just to make sure you stay fresh and feel fresh all day. And lastly, you want to get that shine and sheen with the Beard Oil so your beard can be as fresh and as amazing as you are. And we are back back from our commercial and we're getting into good look bad look no look now this good look bad look no look we are getting into meek mills meek mills just released a new video with justin timberlake called believe so now i want to go to press play jones is this video song good look bad look or no look ah uh, it's a good look for sure i just i was listening oh watching the video earlier today and anything with justin timberlake on it is a smash. I don't care. His vo his vocals on that record is amazing. And this whole record puts me in a vibe of J. Cole Crooked Smile. Like mm. it was nice. Like I loved it. Mm. Okay. All right. Chris Dog, how are you feeling and what are you thinking about this uh Meek Mills featuring Justin Timberlake? Good look, bad look, no look. Bad look. Bad look. Bad look. <laughs> Times three, okay? You come off this championship joint, this is what you want to do? Me? Come on. You had me, son. Don't do me like that. This is trash. The 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 lyrical content was a flowy, Wale-ish feel that wasn't good enough to even for Wale to put out. Like, what are you doing here? Come on, Meek. Don't do me like this. Justin Timberlake, what the fuck are you talking about? What are you even talking about? I don't know if it's a R&B gospel song. I, look, bad look all the way around. The song is trash. 
and the video is not great at all either. Whatever. I'm I'm done with them until <laughs> further notice. Okay, premiere. Uh, how how did you like this video, man? Good look, bad look, no look. And what do you think about the song? So I I, I actually think it's a great look, and here's why. From the minute Meek really started this transition of everything from the, from getting out of you know prison being locked up even though it was bad at the time it turned out to be a great look because look what happened you know he's now in brunches at rock nation with jay-z's and and puffy's and the rest of these you know uh head uh, he's part of the conglomerate now in so many words so now that you do that he's dating Nicki minaj at a point which also was a great look and all this is is just growth you know I understand that a lot of times we, we, we like these artists and we're attached to them for this certain sound that they have. And we want this hood element and this urban element from them. But there's growth that has to happen as people get older. And this look right here with Justin Timberlake just introduces him to another audience as well. So he was already getting more looks when he was dating Nicki uh, from that pop perspective because she is already in that area or they're plays in that arena and this look right here with Justin Timberlake just continues that and that's all he's doing he's just growing his music is growing and it's going to continue to evolve as it should he's getting older yeah you make some good points there Premier he is growing he is maturing but Chris Dog gets this point because this was a bad look the song was not good and the video was even worse the video was literally just in a white room and them walking around the room and they felt like the song was powerful enough to just take over that video, which it wasn't. So I'm definitely gonna have to give that point to Chris Dog, but I will say that he is going the right direction. Him featuring Justin Timberlake is a good look, just not the song, just not the video. All right, next question. We are going to get into the smoke. Yes, now just recently, the winner of the first season of Netflix Rhythm and Flow just released his new project. This project is called Bad Habits. Now, if you did listen to it, you probably heard some similarities to K-Dot. Yep, that TDE artist. So my question is to you, Premier. Is D Smoke gonna have any issues with the comparisons and the similarities to Kendrick Lamar, or is his artistry strong enough to kind of stand alone? People compare for one of two reasons, either because they want to hate on you or because they love you. And, and I mean, hey, if you get compared to Kendrick Lamar, uh, that's a great comparison. There are a lot of trash artists that will never get compared to Kendrick Lamar. So if he's good enough, yeah, he got compared to Kendrick Lamar. So obviously you are good enough. I mean, they compare Kobe to Jordan and, you know, you have to be talented enough to get compared in a way. So. He can approach a different way. You know, he, he's a little talented in other ways. Whether or not he has the budget and whether or not the marketing team and all that, I don't know about that. But is he good enough? Yeah, he's good enough to create his own little wave after he captures a lot of these fans or a lot of people who are comparing him to Kendrick Lamar. Okay. Press Play Jones, what about you? Do you feel like D Smoke can stand alone in his, in his flow or is it not versatile enough? I definitely think D Smoke is creative and his his vocals do put you in the mindset of Kendrick Lamar, but he does have the whole Spanish flair that can gravitate to a whole nother audience. So it's possible as long as he can find a way to not be so much like Kendrick Lamar, he definitely has his own lane. So if he, he goes for that that Spanish audience on top of what he's doing, then yeah, I like it. Okay. Chris Dog, how are you feeling about D Smoke Man and, and after listening to the project, do you feel like he can step away from the sound that Kendrick Lamar brings? Or listen, listen, this question when you, when you said it, I got goosebumps. I'm just gonna take a gander and say that Premiere and Press Play have no idea who this guy really is and didn't listen to this album because this album is great. It is great. It's right up there, top three albums of the year. And that's including Eminem and that's including my guy Lil Wayne. The album is flawless. I read an article talking about how uh, this album was has been being uh, prepared for his entire life. It's his life's work on this album. This is not a kid coming into the game. He just happened to be in, introduced later. He's a 1985 baby. He got skills that he he's not 
Spanish. He just happened to pick up the language along the way. Professor, well uh, spoken, has knowledge, has degrees, and as he puts it on wax. Yeah, he might come off a little bit like Kendrick Lamar, but guess what? They raise it up in the same side of town, and, you know, that delivery just comes along with it. I mean, he's coming with it. He had track on there with Snoop. He got... He he didn't he didn't get feature heavy. He decided to let it be his own body of work, which is appreciative. And he got a machine behind him with TDE to push his music, dude. This guy is this guy is gonna be good for a long time. And if you hadn't listened to him, I promise you, listen to the album. It, it almost gives me the vibes of when Kendrick put out the Butterfly Joint. I'm talking about Grammy esque. I'm talking about Pulitzer type of music. This guy is putting out stuff that you, you need to hear if you're not listening to it. Had yeah. to put that out there. For sure, Chris Dark. You couldn't even said it any better, man. This is a top-notch, top-quality, high-quality project. I mean, everything he puts on there was, was like, well thought out, well put together. He had a strip club song that was slow and telling the women, get your money. You know, that was good. And then to your point, man, he's not Spanish, but he speaks Spanish better than a lot of Spanish people. And then for him to actually put that into here... You know, that's the difference that he has with Kendrick. The difference is he's able to to grab more mature audience and he's able to give you that higher quality of music. So, Chris Dog, you do get the point for that. Yeah, I did feel a little uh, to pimple butterfly coming off when I did hear that D smoke, but it didn't stray away from from D smokes artistry at all. So kudos to you, Chris Dog. Next question. We're still talking about Kendrick Lamar. Now, just recently, he said that he was going to be releasing his biography, The Butterfly Effect, October 13th of this year. Now, after announcing this book, my question is to you, Press Play Jones. After he said he was announcing this book, do you feel like we're going to get a project before he releases his biography? Oh, definitely. That's just another way of promoting his book. Um, his fans definitely want the music before i mean he they definitely want the music with the the book but most most artists that put out a book they also put out a body of music whether it's a single or album so i definitely think he's going to use it as promotion for his book okay all right chris dog do you feel like kendrick lamar is going to catapult his biography book and his sales with a re pre-released album prior to the release of the biography Look, I love artists like this because you never know what you're going to get. Been on this show for a year talking about his Kendrick going to drop an album. <laughs> no, he's not. He's in a total different headspace right now. And if you think you, you, you got him pinched or you think you got your finger on him, you're wrong. He's doing things differently. He has artists that he's pushing. He's not worried about him. He's already done that. If you think about what he did with the music, that, with his discography, discography so far, what does he really have to prove? He has nothing to prove. He's going to continue to make this money with the Shady Aftermath, TDE, Machine, put out the biography, let y'all feel it that way, and maybe at the end of the year, maybe next year, we might get something. I, I can't see it, though. I'll be honest with you. Mm, mm. Okay. Premier, do you see Kendrick dropping an album this year or even before he drops out his biography? I have to agree with Chris Dog. I mean, he really has no reason to push or force music out just to support a book. I mean, this and the book alone is going to do its own numbers because of who he is. Uh, whether or not he's actually writing the book himself, I don't know. If he is in the headspace of writing his own book, then he's definitely not putting out music. If he's not, then he might be, but I don't see it happening either. He has no reason to. He He's a person who likes to perfect what's going on and I haven't really gotten any vibes or any notions that there's music coming out that can't. From him, from him. It is a toss-up. It is a gamble with Kendrick Lamar, but Press Play Jones, you do get the point for that because I do believe it's going to be a bundle package that he does with this music. So that was number six question. We got one more question left. We're going to take this break and finish this show off. Got me caught up in the moment. Yeah, 
This is all I ever wanted. So hold me down like all right, and we're back, and we're back with the last question of the show, and we're getting into, yep, you already know, Snoop Dogg. Now, recently, Snoop Dogg went in on Gayle King, and the reason why he went in on Gayle King is because Gayle King had an interview with Lisa Leslie, basically calling out Kobe for some allegations that were dismissed. Now, Snoop Dogg went in and called her out her name, but later apologized for the remarks that he stated. My question is to you, Press Play Jones again. Now, us knowing who Snoop Dogg is, do you feel like he should have apologized and do you feel like he deserved, she deserved an apology from Snoop Dogg? I don't believe she deserved the apology. I think what she did was file and she's only following the white man's agenda. But as far as Snoop Dogg, he's he's mature. He's a grown he's a grown a man. Like he is in a whole different space mentally. So I just felt like his apology was saying, "I'm bigger than you." Mm. So I, I give you respect as a woman, but you still foul. Mm. Okay, Premier, do you feel like Snoop should have apologized to Gail King? Uh, yeah, after you take time to step back from everything and understand, I understand he, he, he put it out there. He said why he did. He was defending his friend, which, you know, nothing wrong with that. But at, after you step back from it, you know, you have to realize that he is very influential and his words definitely have impact. Uh, people, no excuses for what she did. She shouldn't have asked certain questions. She should have defended Kobe or the black man the same way Snoop went in on her at the same time. But Snoop being influential and having people who look up to him, you have to forgive. I mean, that's the that's the right thing to do. So he, he forgave and he apologized publicly the same way he did defame her or talk about her publicly. So he did the right thing, in my opinion. OK. What about you, Chris Dog? Do you feel like she even deserved the, the apology? And do you feel like Snoop Dogg even should have did it? So first of all, um, being a grown ass man, like everybody's saying Snoop is, there's no room for him to do that in the first place. We know Snoop Dogg will go off the handle every day, now and then and say something, but I felt like his comment towards Gail took away from what Lisa Leslie already accomplished in the interview itself. She she did she said more than enough words without having to use uh, the you know. The, the word bitch at the time. Uh, but Snoop was being Snoop. He got emotional in the moment. He went online. He did what he did. Then he apologized, whatever, whatever. Like I said, more than anything, I felt like him doing that took away from what Lisa Leslie had already did. And, and she did more than enough. Shout out to Lisa. Okay. All right. Yeah, you guys were right. And I'm definitely going to have to still give this to Premier. Uh, with this interview, man, this interview was just really outlandish. But... We all know what Snoop Dogg did. He played the bigger role in this, and he still made Gail look like the boo-boo the fool. Um, but with that being said, still this win goes to Press Play Jones for taking over and doing her thing for the show. Press Play Jones, go ahead and speak your piece in your time. I appreciate this win. You go ahead and subscribe, hit the button below, and follow me at Press Play Jones. All right, you all heard it here first. Make sure y'all tune in next week. We'll see y'all then. Peace.